Um, we've had some news coming into this weekend surface. Um, Gary Owen and Red Bull have officially signed a one-year contract extension as Red Bull will switch to Audi Power next year. I think this is a good decision for Owen. Attentions have calmed at McLaren and I can't see him having a better ride then where he's at now. You heard the news, we have signed a one season extension with Red Bull Ford going into the final season of this F123 driver career mode. So we will be sticking it out after, you know, raising some concerns, of course, going into the later half of this season. But Red Bull was, of course, committed to making changes for us. And that, of course, saw them swap over now from the Ford Power going to Audi Power going into this uh, final season of the career mode. Red Bull going to look completely different on the racetrack. And hopefully it's going to be a good combination. But uh, I'm hoping we don't have to wait until next season to find that good combination. I'm, I'm hoping that we have the combo this season and we can win the world championship here as last episode we were able to get back to the near top step of the podium just finishing runner up there to Charles Leclerc getting second place as he was able to pass us in those closing moments of the Grand Prix looking to win today in Imola we've won here before we've had pretty good success when it comes to this circuit here so I was pretty confident coming into this one here as we roll through now into Saturday qualifying it's now a two driver fight between myself and Aiden Jackson who was top of the board in Q1 and I only had managed P13 there as you see Sonoda, Gasly, Ocon, Vesti and Joe all out in Q1 number one. Q2 looking of course to find a little bit more pace to uh, find the competitiveness in this Red Bull but I was struggling in my first lap of Q2 here and I knew immediately I was going to have to run a third lap if I wanted to be able to get into the top 10 and you're going to see it here out of the final turn down this front straight away opening up the rear wing for the DRS and it's only P12 however I found a lot of pace in turn one and two through three and that would carry us through to nearly two and a half tenths of a second but I would find uh, time over the rest of the lap and especially in the final couple of corners we get nearly seven tenths of a second gain and that puts us all the way into the top three here in Q2 we go second place on the board to Aiden Jackson Jamie Chadwick Jack Dewan Yuri Vips Marino Sato as well as Liam Lawson all out in Q2 Q3 now on the board and I actually invalidated my lap on the early part of the session uh, so we get a lap a little bit later on here now and only two cars on track at this point is myself and Oscar Piastri Aiden Jackson his lap was quite miserable he's down in P8 this is an opportunity that we need right here to pounce on because now he's going to be starting a little bit further down the grid so what can we do as we come through up towards the chicane now and uh, things felt pretty good and I'm looking at the timing nearly four tenths of an advantage to George Russell we might have a chance at pole through the final couple of corners here out of the final turn down the front straight away we'll get that rear wing open right about now to the line it's going to be pole position in Imola that's pole position mate great stuff but don't get carried away yet Piastri is still coming we have to wait for Piastri to come back around and here he comes on the track map to the line and he's going to dethrone us p2 is where we will start here from Imola so uh still front row can't complain as Aiden Jackson will start from the back of the top 10 all the way down down in p10 while Leclerc and Trackhouse looking strong first and third as we get ready to roll here uh in Imola let's head to the grid this race has gone by several former names the Italian Grand Prix the San Marino Grand Prix and now the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix it's race day we're at Imola welcome one lap of Imola, anti-clockwise of course, unlike most Formula 1 circuits, will take our drivers round 3.1 miles of track, 19 turns, 9 right-handers and 10 to the left. Drivers will need to be precise at the hairpin at turn 7, given the subsequent uphill section. Without a good exit from that corner, they'll lose a lot of time on that stretch. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race. Oscar Piastri lines up on pole position and Golden Boy completes the front row. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Leclerc, Albon, Hamilton, Bayer, Drogovic, Russell, Norris, Jackson, Chadwick, Dewan, Yuri Vips, Sato, Liam Lawson, Sonoda, 
Gasly, Ocon, Vesti, and Joe Guan Yu. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head down trackside for today's race. It's just about time to go down to the track for the beginning of the race, but before we do, Anthony Davidson, what types of strategy do you think we can expect for today's event? Well, there's a lot that both the driver and the team have to keep in mind when going into a race. The tyres, fuel, energy recovery systems, the list goes on and on. But I think the key to today's victory will come down to the pit stop strategy. Come in too soon and you might find yourself needing more than one stop. Too late and you're putting yourself at a disadvantage by spending longer on worn tyres. We're ready to roll then. Softs to mediums is going to be the obvious strategy here. Uh, and we will take a little bit of feel out of the car. Not sure what to expect in MLS. Sometimes it's calm, sometimes it's crazy. Let's find out and get ready to roll. The formation lap gets underway then. And it's going to be interesting today to see how the dry conditions could affect the lifespan of the tires. We see a pretty split down the middle. Softs to medium strategy. Zalbon, Hamilton through Mayer all on mediums there and fourth through sixth. We're almost ready to start the race as the cars take their positions on the grid, with the drivers and teams making their final preparations. All right, let's take advantage of Jackson's poor effort today. Yeah, 10-4. Uh, just keep me updated on where he's running. So we'll pull up to the grid here in Imola and Draghouse coming off of the win last episode now in Coda, a home win for the American team. Of course, it was absolutely fantastic to see them uh, again on the top step of the podium for the second time uh, in that team's history now. And they are looking to go back to back with putting both cars in the top three. The thing we've always seen with Draghouse, though, we didn't see it last episode, but we see it often, is they can start well, but they kind of fade as the race goes on. Well, we see that today. We're going to find out right now because it's going to be lights out and we're racing here in Italy now as we go wheel to wheel immediately with Oscar Piastri will be side by side Leclerc is going to dip in behind the, the Australian teammate there in front of him as he peeks the nose I'm going to slide in just behind Leclerc he actually got me there into the first corner in the background Aiden Jackson's had a poor start he's outside of the top 10 that's absolutely perfect for us here in this Red Bull Ford as we continue on just in front of Alex Albon my teammate of Felipe Drogovic just behind him uh, and then you got the first Ferraris in the background, the Mercedes as well, uh, as we'll wait and see what kind of pace they have. Last episode in Coda, we saw such an equal match pace between Trackhouse, Red Bull, as well as McLaren, and Mercedes as well was up there in the mix. Well, we see something similar to that today. I personally, I, I really don't think we will, uh, but never say never here. Now, as you can see, lap two already, and Leclerc has run down Piastri, putting a lot of pressure on him. I was struggling to get right up there with these guys uh, in these early portions of this Grand Prix. 32 laps of racing, so we've got a lot of time to let things play out. Imola, in previous games, used to be so wild here when it came to this circuit, and you would always see some safety cars, but we haven't really seen chaotic Grand Prix here in Imola in F123, and you can see now coming to lap four we have now DRS enabled at this point I have a full second advantage of Albon who's on those mediums and here comes Charles Leclerc to the right side of his teammate of Oscar Piastri looking for the lead of the Grand Prix but Oscar Piastri not going to give it up easy Piastri is still looking for that first career win in Formula 1 and he is showing it here today now gets the elbows out on the previous race winner they'll nearly go side by side I back out of it I thought Leclerc was going to hit the brakes way too hard there uh, and fortunately we avoid any contact uh, as we continue to just follow behind this duo of cars but unfortunately that was allowing Albon and uh, Drogovic as well to close up on the back of me again Leclerc coming to lap five nearly into the barrier swings to the left side catches Piastri off guard he goes through now I'll look up the inside but I knew that wasn't going to be a smart move so we back out of it but Piastri just lacking pace early on here after starting from pole position and you can see Leclerc gonna drive away from Piastri as this lap goes on I get a bit of a warning there for exceeding track limits but Piastri Ashley is way off the pace right now. He is going to drop like a rock down this order uh, once I am able to get past him. Bring Albon through as well. As Jack Doohan now out of the session with a mechanical failure there in the Connor Sport McLaren. And moments later, we'll swing to the right side of Piastri. We'll cruise on by into second place. And it's shades of last episode chasing down Leclerc in the early portions of this Grand Prix. Albon would struggle to pass Piastri, but he would eventually get the job done. But now the gap to him was 1.3 seconds, while Drogovic now has to work his way past Piastri. But he would also do that in the next lap. So lap eight, you can see we have run down Leclerc 
there, but we've also run down some, uh, maybe some steering issues, some handling issues in this car, a little bit oversteery, to say the least, and now actually a, a, a second bit of it right there, uh, but we were okay, we were settling in behind Leclerc, getting ready to pounce on an opportunity to overtake for the lead of this Grand Prix. Here we go, down the front straight away, right to the back wing of Leclerc. We'll cruise over to the right side of the circuit, right against the barrier now, and we'll be able to get past him and take the lead here in Imola, but we saw how last episode played out. We took the lead uh, in around a similar time, uh, and hopefully we can hold on to it here for the remainder of the Grand Prix, unlike what we were able to do uh, last episode in Circuit of the America. Zayden Jackson, lap 10, just now breaking into the top 10, passing Jamie Chadwick there who was holding on to that position uh, so Jackson really struggling here this weekend and it's great to see for us because this is going to be big time helpful in the championship yellow flags in the background and it's Kelly Mayer on lap 11 who's going to pull over in that Ferrari with a mechanical failure there and her struggles in the recent episodes kind of continue here as now Alex Albon will move through into second place now over Leclerc Piastri and Drogovic are fighting in the background side by side on the run down towards turn one but Drogovic is going to get through back into fourth again but he misses the corner and he comes back on and tears his wing and Norris's wing off as well and now contact with Lewis Hamilton that's going to do damage to Lewis Hamilton's front wing. The safety car will be deployed as debris from front wings from three different cars is scattered all across the circuit. So we're going to be coming into the pits here immediately and we're going to be putting on a set of medium tires uh, and call it for a pit stop basically. We're, we're done for the day in terms of pitting. Uh, but there's a lot of cars pitting and watch Aiden Jackson. He's going to come into his pit stall from P10 and he's going to be able to get his pit stop done and going before anybody else because everybody's double stacking a bunch of cars are stuck here waiting for other cars to pit Aiden Jackson just won the lottery he went from p10 to p5 in the pit cycle due to cars in front of him having to make wing repairs and whatnot as well okay just so you're aware Jackson got up to fifth during the pit stops brilliant you hear my reaction there so we will be the control car for the restart. Lap 14 coming to lap 15 over Albon, Leclerc, Piastri, and then Aiden Jackson, who, as we just said, you know, won the lottery. I go right towards the exit of that final corner, which allows Albon to have the whole straightaway to try and run me down, but I would rather build up as big of a gap on the exit of the corner and give him that whole straightaway than wait till a little bit later on the straightaway and not build up as much of a gap, and I think he would have a better opportunity to overtake me in the second option. So we go with option one. Accelerate as soon as we hit the exit of the corner. Here comes Albon right to the rear wing. All ready now. We know the AI. They're always quicker uh, on the first First lap of a restart, so you got to be ready for it here uh, as we complete that first lap. However, P1 at the end of lap 15, Albon went on to the hard compound tires, so he is expected to be strong at the tail end of this Grand Prix, but he's strong now of the inside. An unexpected move, but we're not going to back out of it here. We continue wheel to wheel, and we stay ahead of Albon, who will still remain P2 in front of Charles Leclerc and that track house machinery, and Piastri, Jackson, and Jamie Chadwick following P6, a great run for Chadwick, who's really uh, capitalizing on, you know, Hamilton, uh, as well as our teammate of Drogovic and Lando Norris, picking up that wing damage all in one go there. So she's up to P6, having a good run, and you can see on the track map, uh, Hamilton, the only Ferrari left, running a ways behind right now. George Russell, who is in P7, uh, as Hamilton is kind of caught up in some battles right here. Coming to the end of lap 17, now DRS enabled at this point, and Albon is closing quickly here. We might might have a change for the lead. Here comes Alex Albon to the left side. He'll clear us. Not even a contest right there. Add absolutely nothing uh, for him. So he will move through into the lead of the Grand Prix. A little bit over 10 laps ago. Still at this point about 15 laps ago. Uh, as we now come through the chicane lap 19. Just trying to stay within, you know, uh, striking distance. If the opportunity is there to go for the overtake, we're going to take it just about immediately. And as we exit the final turn, coming to the start now of lap 20. 13 laps to go again an opportunity for myself to go through and take the lead of this Grand Prix as Lando Norris comes through to go top of the board in terms of fastest lap times here but we retake the lead here in Imola so Leclerc remains P3 Jackson has not made any forward movement yet on Oscar Piastri which is great to see for us if he can stay down there in P5 I would be pretty happy the further up he goes the more pressure that's on me to win this Grand Prix of course now as we come through uh, that final turn again and you can see about half a second uh, to 
to Alex Zell on about six tenths of a second. That's really what puts him in striking distance. If he's closer than really seven to six tenths of a second, it's really hard to hold him back. And here he comes again, a hard charge from Albon. He'll look up the inside on the run towards turn one. He'll clear us again. As I just know, going side by side through there is not a great idea. So I just kind of back out of it and say, okay, I'll get you back. Of course, uh, myself with the DRS now with 11 laps to go in this Grand Prix. Albon all over the place right there, but he stays ahead now through the chicane going a little bit wide here, but no warning as we bank it down enough and then through the DRS we'll go back to the lead here with just 10 laps to go from Imola. Now back to P1, Leclerc holds on, Jackson's passed uh, as well, Piastri a poor exit through turn one there for Albon, that puts up a nice gap between himself and I, but uh, as well uh, Piastri has gotten passed by Lando Norris down to P6 as we're going to go through the grid. Owen's got those elbows out today, Martin. He's putting up a big fight to Alex Albon and McLaren as he leads with 10 laps to go. He knows he needs to beat Jackson and keep as many cars between them as possible. Albon knows he needs to try and get ahead of Owen for Jackson, but also the constructors battle as well, which is really close. Lando Norris runs fifth, showcasing a lot of speed late in the running. Ted, what can you share about Mercedes? Yeah, Crofty, they've shown today the same thing they've shown most of the year. They start off slow, then find pace as the race goes on. They started the year hot, but have never found that same fire they had. How about Yuri Vips in the Lotus running ninth right now? He continues to be the most impressive rookie of the season. Jamie Chadwick as well running great in the Connorsport car, seventh as it stands. Is it safe to say that we will have two female drivers on the grid next year, you think, Martin? Oh, absolutely, Corfty. There's no way it doesn't happen. We still need to know what Ferrari is doing as well. As I've been hearing, they will be waiting right until the end of the year to decide who gets the second seat. And there you have through the grid here from Imola. Last running right now, Pierre Gasly in the Andretti machine as we have less than 10 laps to go. Albon continues to run P2, but now he's under pressure from Leclerc, who will swing to the right side of the circuit here, trying to go P2. Can he complete the job? I think he can. Contact and spinning goes Alex Albon, the front wing torn off, and the safety car is going to be called immediately here as Albon's wrecked himself again this season. You see the onboard camera all on his own. The wing tears off from the rear tire of Leclerc's passing Trackhouse machine. Oh my goodness, Albon's day comes to an absolutely abysmal end. He will remain in the race, but obviously he's going to have to box for a front wing change uh, as that is absolutely heartbreaking for him and for me because Jackson is now up to third as we were getting ready to go back green again coming to lap 28 of 32 what is he going to be capable of we have to pay close attention to him i'm going to do the same kind of restart as last time final turn hit that throttle go hard get out of dodge leclerc half a second between himself and i i don't think the pressure is going to be from leclerc i think the pressure is going to be from aiden jackson we know he's going to be strong in these closing laps there's just enough time for jackson to get past Leclerc and probably put pressure on myself. I know the AI, they are very strong when it comes to the final lap here in Imola, so that's something we got to pay attention to and, and be ready to uh, respond to, really, uh, and make sure that Jackson doesn't get the right opportunities at, well, what would be the right time for him, the wrong time for me. And as we come through to lap 29, Jackson already completing the pass on Leclerc into turn one there, wheel to wheel, actually, but Jackson gets it done. So Leclerc down to P3, Norris, fourth, Piastri, back up into the top five. Both track house cars in the top five would be a heck of an effort, actually, uh, as we rarely see that now. Uh, as we come through to three laps to go, two and a half really to be exact, and you can see myself and Jackson driving away. Leclerc is five seconds behind, and I went and looked at the replay. He never picked up any damage, so something's clearly gone wrong in that track house machine. Leclerc's got a mechanical issue with two laps to go. I got no pace, guys. The engine is failing. You hear Leclerc's radio comment there. We continue on in the lead, but Jackson is closing less than a second between himself and I coming to the final lap of this Grand Prix. And now we have to win. We need to beat Jackson. He's put us in a must-win scenario, and we increase the gap just over 
a second at the DRS detection, so we will not have to worry about him having DRS to start this final lap of the Grand Prix, which is huge because we keep the gap to 1.2 seconds on this final lap through turn one. Oscar Piastri now through on Leclerc as well. Leclerc continues to struggle with an engine issue. He's got Jamie Chadwick just behind uh, him as well. She runs P6, I believe, and Dragovich as well trying to rebound uh, with Lewis Hamilton with Alex Albon, but Albon's like, it uh, looks like he's actually rebounded the best, but here comes Aiden Jackson within half a second into the final chicane, but if you can get through the chicane ahead, it's basically over. We just have to make it through the last couple of corners at this point. Six wins on the season. The two winningest drivers right here, one, two in the running order, one, two in the championship order. Well, Jackson P1, us P2, but we round the final turn. Our seventh win of the season will come here in Italy in Imola. Let's go, boys. Come on. It's not over yet. Ah, oh, fantastic drive. That's just fantastic. Amazing. You deserve that race win. Well done, mate. Great drive, Gary. That's win seven on the season. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. A few races to go. It's game on. They take the checkered flag then here in Imola in what has been another outstanding Grand Prix. What a race, honestly. Uh, probably the most chaotic Himmler race we've ever had in the career mode. And, and fortunately, at the end of it all, we get to celebrate uh, here at the top step of the podium for the seventh time this season, which is absolutely uh, fantastic here. Uh, in, uh, well, like I said, I think what our 21st, 20th or 21st career win at this point now uh, in Formula One, which is also uh, pretty cool uh, that we've been able to get into the 20s uh, as we'll head out on to the podium to celebrate as well uh you know very unnoticed there lando norris what a rebound for him he had his front wing torn off by felipe Dragovic uh earlier in the grand prix rebounds to third place podium finish there for norris who was really really quick towards the end of that grand prix mercedes kind of feels like the opposite of track house track house kind of seems to fade as the race goes on after starting really hot where mercedes kind of is is not there at the beginning and then they get really hot towards the end but they just they're playing catch up all race long so it's really interesting to see the dynamic of those two different teams kind of have two exactly opposite kind of races play out just about every episode uh but track house something's better with this team they won coda they get both cars in the top five today Oscar Piastri fighting for his ride. I think we're going to have some clarity on what's going on there very soon. Uh, as you can see, 27 points still. We have to make up on Aiden Jackson with just a few Grand Prix to go. Next episode, we head to Jeddah. 18 points ahead of McLaren as well. I'll see you guys then. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.